Hi guys and welcome from a battle between the sly sneaky seal, of course taking command of Clan Eshin, the sneakiest of rats, up against Consul of Rome and his much beloved High Elves. So let's get into this battle and uh, get it cracking. So it looks like Sly and Sneaky Seal going very thematic here with a Clan Eshin build. And we're in fact probably going to have to pause this start right here. As you can see, there is sneakiness afoot. There's no army in the deployment zone of the Sly Sneaky Seal. So let's have a little look at what uh, tricks he has up his sleeves. So in the front, we have a few units of gutter runners. Going to be just been a little bit of harass, been a little bit of a pain, distracting his opponent and hopefully luring him to think that the rest of his army is over here being hidden but in reality his army is being super sneaky in the back here and it is completely clan eshin themed so he has a load of death runners these guys are huge damage dealers one they look absolutely badass but two they you know they're very good at their job of course we also have the vestrin's death squad regiment round version with their concealment bombs weeping blades all that nasty good stuff plus they just look very very badass we have a nice front line of those one two three four and in the back we have a couple of units of eshin triads these are one of my new favorite units it looks like we have the regiment round version as well to uh, be added to the skaven roster now a lot of people seem to think they uh, lack a little punch and stuff in combat but the key here is not to use them as a front line troop they're anti-large they're armor piercing they have those weeping blades they are deadly against cav especially light cav which is normally what your opponent uses to sneak into the back hop on top of your gisels and your mortars and all your guns like that so you use these guys in the back they are stalked your opponent runs in and uh, you trap them so let's have a little look at uh, his leadership for Clan Eshin. We do, of course, have an assassin. I mean, what Clan Eshin army, what good Clan Eshin army doesn't have at least one assassin? So we have him. Looks like he's going to be rolling in a death squad with the Death Master Snickich himself. And he's bringing all his abilities, Whirl of Weeping Blades, which is a very cool attack animation. Also Death Master Sigil, just to pin an opponent in place. And it looks like he's also gone for an Eshin Sorcerer, which you would expect for his mage. Eshin Sorcerer is incredibly powerful, in my opinion. Brittle Bones is a fantastic ability, which is a hex. Minus 40 melee defense, 24% speed, and 9% vigor. Basically pinning someone in place and weakening them. This can really destroy um, elite units units and you know allow your little rats to punch away above their bait their um, weight sorry but also it really helps combination drop this you send an assassin in you pop trophy heads you send death master snickerch in and you just delete characters he's brought armor of darkness and warp stars so it looks like a pretty cool build overall being very sneaky now if we have a little look at consul of rome and the high elves he's gone for a, a much more defensive approach which is his favorite way of playing and he is very successful at doing this in the front line he has some spearmen just to hold the line and do their job and in the back is where the real kind of punch comes from so he has one unit of shadow warriors next to a unit of lofran seaguard for the added ranged damage also in reserve he has some white lines of chase for the added punch and another unit of lofran seaguard and another unit of shadow warriors so some nice range on the flanks a bit of added punch in the center now he does have some cav up on this right hand flank, just some silver helms with shields, fairly cheap and cheerful, I really like this pick. You don't need to go super heavy cav against Skaven, cav like this, more than pack enough punch to run over most of the Skaven army and you don't want their guns targeting out very expensive dragon princes and so forth. It looks like he has another unit of silver helms hidden in the trees over on the flank. Let's have a little, little look at his leadership. So we do have a Mage of Heavens here. Looks like we're just bringing Wind Blast. Is that correct? Well, we have Book of Hoef as well. And then Wind Blast. So overall, just going to be trying to get in there and probably drop that on some weapons teams or more tightly packed units. In the very front, we have a Hand of the Shadow Crown. Now, I've never seen this guy in multiplayer before. So when you're playing a friendly, you're not in a tournament or have unit caps or anything, you can now use units which are normally only designed to be on the campaign map. So basically, he is a cheaper and cheerful version of Alephanar. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. He's vanguard slightly ahead of his main forces. We also have a cheap and cheerful prince, just with stand your ground, going to be holding the line and allowing him to get these other kind of cool side characters in, like Alistair the White line this guy is an absolute beast in law i believe he normally rides into battle on a uh, chariot pulled by these giant white lions 
Unfortunately, I think in um, Total War he actually rides a dragon or an eagle and that kind of the standard mount. So it'd be nice to see his uh, lion chariot in, but maybe that's going to be coming in game three. And he, of course, is the head of the White Lions of Chase. So nice to see he's uh, going to be accompanying his brothers there. So let's get this battle underway. And some early shots coming in as these gutter runners are immediately spotted. And it uh, looks like a 360 no scope as well coming in from the hand of the Shadow Crown, but not actually getting any kills. Gutter runners love taking missiles, they can take them for days. They're rather spread out in their form and uh, they're very cheap and cheerful as well. So it looks like we do have some night runs sneaking up onto these silver helms and it doesn't look like Consul of Rome has yet noticed the sneakiness but as you can see your hidden units are revealed and all of a sudden in the back here this assassin before he popped his concealment bomb was actually uh, spotted briefly so if Consul of Rome has noticed this he's gonna have to rearrange his army as quick as possible. Now it is Cav, looks like they were just fended off those Night Runners before deciding to reposition and try and pop on top of some of these other Gutter Runners. And I think he's starting to realise what's going on, but he's got a lot of his ranged troops at the back here. Cav is now springing forward, trying to react as fast as possible, as more and more of these units are being revealed. So as you can see, the Silver Helms reacting, lightning quick reflexes there by Consul, and he's thundering towards these little rats. And look at that damage from just the initial charge. But some really nice play here, Escher Triads trying to cut off these guys retreat and crunch down behind them and now the uh, trap has been completely sprung and it is absolute chaos as you can see we have white lines trying to flee back here archers trying to spin and shoot hand of the shadow crown also falling back in this direction and those silver helms have had some fantastic burst damage early on but they do not want to stay in combat they're going to be getting pinned down by eshin triads and death runners and as you can see brittle bronze has been popped on these guys and they are being deleted so really nice early charge doing some huge damage but in return they are paying for their lives now as you can see what this ambush has allowed the sly and sneaky seal to do he simply picked on one half of the high elf army so the high elf army was a really nice position nice quite long line which is what you want blocking off all the avenues of any sneaky rats of your spearmen and then allowing your ranged troops to do the damage whilst your silver helms thunder through and do the added punch but because sly and sneaky seal did this uh, very sly move himself living up to his name there he's just focused on the left hand side of these high elves making these spearmen these lothran Seaguard, these spearmen, these spearmen here as well, and these Shadow Warriors are pretty much out of the battle doing nothing. And of course, Consul of Rome, his micro is going to be really stressed here, trying to deal with the new threats coming from behind. He's not going to be able to rearrange all these troops in time to meet that threat. So unfortunately, you do end up with spearmen and Lothran Seaguard just kind of standing around doing nothing, which is uh, not a, a negative on Consul of Rome. I think that's just a really good play there by the Sly and Sneaky Seal and his trap. So as you can see, White Lions, Spearmen are now starting to retaliate, but what are they going to run after him? I mean, they don't want to go up against Deathmaster Sniggish, he will delete them fairly quickly, especially even help with that Assassin, but at the same time, they don't want to get bogged down, they want to hop on top of these nasty, you know, Hand of the Shadows, Alistair, Mages, and all that good stuff. As the white line has popped into combat against the Vistrin Death Squad, not perfectly where he wants to be. He's only up to three kills so far, and he's taken quite a lot of damage. But as you can see, the battle has become, you know, a series of small skirmishes in different directions. It looks like we had two units, unfortunately, chasing off one unit of Silver Helms. So Eshin Triads and uh, a unit of Ishka's Triads as well need to get back in here and help out, because if the High Elves do manage to rally, that could be a bit of a problem. And it looks like Consul Rome is now really getting on it and uh, made a good job of trying to recover from that early damage he's um destroying these gutter runners fairly comfortably here although he's wasting a little bit of ammo but you know it's a necessary evil his uh, prince is now completely surrounded by death runners he's got some loyal spearmen trying to rally to his aid but death runners love this type of fight they will pull apart spearmen in a matter of seconds as you can see their armor is down to 20 now because of those weeping blades and over here, it looks like a nice pick by Deathmaster Snickich and the Eshin Sorcerer have managed to isolate Alice of the White Lion. His White Lions of Chase desperately sprint into the aid of their Lord, but with an Assassin in there as well, we're going to see trophy heads popped down and Alistair is probably doomed to die, unfortunately, but can the White Lions avenge their fallen master? Now we do have some spearmen and with the help of it looks like a little bit of firepower from the Shadow Warriors are actually managed to break off some Eshin Triads and Death Runners. Now they're fighting for their life against Vistrin's Death Squad. But unfortunately for them, Vistrin's Death Squad have some awesome flipping animations. They just flip over top of those uh, shields and cut off the heads of these poor, poor spearmen. 
So, it looks like the Hives are making a pretty decent job at rallying. They've managed to scare off a lot of Skaven units. And if we have a quick look over here, we do have a full health unit of Eshin Triads who needs to come back to the main fight. But they did manage to deal with those Silver Helms. If we have a quick overlook in the arcing view of the battlefield here, we do have Ishka's Triads who should be able to mop up the Spearmen and Shadow Warriors. The main fight is all slowly starting to get dragged together into the centre here. So the Prince is fighting for his life with some Spearmen, should hopefully be able to overcome those Death Runners, but then he only really has this range cl um, clump up here, and uh, Death Master Snickich is well and truly on his way. He drops the Death Master Sigil down on that mage. That mage is going nowhere. And the Death Squad of the Assassin and the Death Master just delete that guy so quickly. And he instantly shatters off the battlefield. So it looks like that Assassin and Death Master Snitch have had Alistair to his name as well as the mage. And with that mage going down, the rest of the High of Army just crumbles and breaks. So a Pyrrhic victory there for the Skaven. I thought they were going to hold on a little bit longer there if their prince still been alive. But it looks like they had had just about enough. So a very cool victory. Let's go do a, a tiny bit of analysis. So overall, this whole film was about that one uh, vanguard play, really. The entire army, you know, popping up behind the enemy, apart from a few units of Death Runners, just to distract Consul of Rome and try and uh, keep his attention for as long as possible. And it worked perfectly. He managed to pick apart the High Elf army. Um, although a very good rally late game, and I felt like he could have still... Um, it wasn't kind of gone from him. He still could have kept fighting, but it looks like army losses must have just set in after the loss of his heroes, and uh, unfortunately down the High Elves went. But really nice play getting the Eshin Trides onto the Silver Helms who did some really fantastic early shock damage. They really started running over these Death Runners but they needed to get in there and then cycle charge because of course the Weeping Blades come in, the Anti-Large comes in and they slowly got dragged down but the real MVPs here was the combination of Death Master Snickich and the Assassin. They wandered around, wiped out Alistair wiped out the Mage of Heavens, and also had a big hand probably in wiping out the Hand of Shadows, although we didn't catch that. That is just a little bit of a hunch, but overall, really cool battle, very cool tactics. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, it was a super fun battle. If you did, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing, all that good, fun, standard YouTube stuff. We are going to have a tournament underway, well there is actually a tournament underway right now. Uh, we are doing it offline, and then we're doing an online stream where I'm going to be showing off the replays. This is because Unfortunately, at the moment, there's some glitches in the game that, especially if you're a spectator, your game will often crash in between lobbies. And uh, we don't want to go through that. So, until those type of things do get fixed, we're going to be doing it offline and I'll be giving that to you guys very, very soon. So, keep an eye out for that. It's going to be over the next couple of days. And until then, guys, peace, peace, and stay awesome.